Hello everyone and welcome to another guide video for Terra and Victor. This time we go over 10 things that I would have liked to know before I went into my first playthrough because Terra and Victor by now is most likely my favorite single player game of the last couple of years. But it also has some issues with explaining th th some things and with its high level of complexity that can lead to some problems coming up. And as I played on the stream, some things just really were hard to find out. Chat was helpful in pointing them out to me often, and I want to be helpful to you now in pointing 10 things that I would have loved to know before I started my first playthrough to you. And let's start on Earth with number 10. And that is the perch is really hard to do if you don't crack down first. Crackdown, in general, is one of the most important features, especially in the late game, like the or in the mid game already. When all the earth is go gobbled up, all the control points are gobbled up by the seven factions. That goes faster than you wish it would go, and even with a high level espionage character like this one, that has sixteen espionage, perching even with high influence investment is still pretty tough if you don't crack down first. Once you crack down into a place, the perch in the next turn is instantly over 90% usually. Like crack down gives an insane bonus. So you really want to have a high investigation specialist in your team that can do crackdowns well because they are your way in. Even in a heavily guarded area like this one, uh, where we already pushed public opinion heavily into our favor, where we are in within the control zones of one of our major nations and so on. Um, it's still not easy. But crackdown, without crackdown perching, it just becomes absolute chore. So get one high investigation character. Don't just focus on control nation, with, which is the way of getting them in the early game, with uh, persuasion. But you also want a high level uh, investigator. You don't need too high of an espionage for the purchase then, as once you have a crackdown, the purge is relatively easy, but purge first. And on the other hand, to make all of this harder, do the defense, defend interest around your areas. It's super important. The AI does it non-stop and it really makes life harder for you. And if you do it on your major nations, like I did on the European Union and the United Arab League here, as you can see on this screen up here, it's become just so much harder for them to get on top of you. So let's move on to tip number nine. And number nine is that mission controls and boost is super important in this game. But there is a limited number of mission controls. And that num number, for example, for Poland is five, uh, eight. Currently, they can still build mission controls, but if you go too high on mission controls, and mission controls are super important, as they limit how much you can have in space, how many ships, how many space stations, how many uh, bases on other planets you can have in space, you can max out on them. And if you go too hard for it, you can max out relatively quickly in smaller nations. So I would recommend going a bit easy on it in smaller nations. Don't go all in on it. You still want quite a few, but on the smaller nations you can max out relatively quickly, so be a bit careful there. Um, the next one is most likely the most important tip I had when when I first played, because I used the um, set nation, national policy mission quite often on the nation when I created, for example, the United Arab League out of the nations here. and what. I was confused by then was that I couldn't do the action I wanted to do. Like, I thought I could just easily invite um, the Israel into it, for example, but I couldn't. I was frustrated and they didn't know why. And the reason why is that everything has a cooldown when it comes to um, interactions with other nations. And you can check them over here. Next to the overview button, when you hover over this national policy bar, you see what kind of... Uh, objectives you can as national policies. For example, currently we can do some pieces in the war we have going on 
or we can grant independence out to the nations that we have unified into the United Arab League. So this is really important if you especially want to unify Europe or like get more nations into the European Union and you want to see who, which nations you can interact with or, or which nations you can if you want to sabotage the European Union, Union, which ones you can release maybe, you can check all of this over this and it's a really helpful button that doesn't ex get explained to you anywhere before. And then the reason how I got the United Arab League, this is not a nation you can create from the get-go, is super helpful research and a super important research for these things. That is the next tip. Tip number four is that you can get them over here, great nations and unity movements are the way how you can get claims, basically, if you are a Paradox player, you um, if you want thing with that mindset, if you, how you get claims on other countries is by the unity movements and the great nations movements. On the other side, if you want to split up nations, if you, for example, want to split up Russia or the USA, um, the independence movements is the and the fall of empires are the two researchers for that independence movements for smaller nations like Japan or Indonesia, and then fall of empires for China, Russia, India, and the United States. So you can do that as well over here, which can help big time making the life easier for you, because having to interact with all these small nations costs you a lot of time. Like if you want to advise Libya Egypt and Israel, you need to use three of your counselors for advising each individually. This way around, I only need one to advise it. But if you want to make it harder for the rest of the world, you obviously can split it up further and then make it harder for them to control. Also, it costs less control points to control one big nation compared to the smaller parts of it. So unifying is really, really important if you can get there in the later game. Another thing that is super important and that I highly underestimated, um, though I still did somewhat right, is boost. Boost is super important. Boost and research are the two things that you really want to go for in the early game, but boost even more so because being the first in space is just immensely powerful and you don't need these resources at the beginning. Like when you start with zero, zero, zero here and you get the, like when you get the first space station out, it tells you you have minus here. You think like, oh, how, how do I get these? Like first I was thinking I could get them on Earth, at least the water and the metals, right? Would make kind of sense because there's metals on Earth. But no, these are just the space resources. They're not represented on Earth whatsoever. The way how you get everything out into space is via this over here. For example, if you go to Earth, um, into the Earth atmosphere to found a platform into intermediate Earth orbit, you need boost and you need money. Money you obviously always want to get, but boost is really important and it gets really expensive to get the first couple of mining stations out. Once you got mining on and once you got all of these resources, you can build things in space with these as well. And then you don't need as much boost anymore. By now we have accumulated a lot of boost, but in the early game, few resources are as important as boost and you should really try to maximize that by getting nations that give you a lot of boost or if you get a nation that doesn't have a space program at the beginning, get them a space program ASAP. Like, yeah, space programs, nations that don't have one at the beginning, you really should be threading carefully around. You need nations with space programs at the beginning. And if they're like Germany close to it, you want to get them there ASAP. Um, yeah. And then another important thing next to the boost thing is, and the, the no need of metals is that you don't need any ships like I thought first of all uh, first to get to Mars or so I need to build ships but you don't need ships the ships that go to Mars are not represented on the screen they are not part of your fleet you can send ships and so on to Mars and all the asteroids later on if you have the research and then uh, like the research that is necessary to get there that is over here if you have the specific one that you need for that, like mission to Mars, deep space propulsion, mission to the moon, and mission to the asteroids, and the inner planets, for example. Like, if you have these missions, you can then do go there by just clicking, for example, on these asteroids, and then 
you have to send a launch prospector probe first. That costs you a bit of resources, but once the prospector has gotten there, then you can get a station on the, the that object. Obviously, first you start with Moon usually, then you go to Mars, then to the asteroids or the inner planets, Mercury and Venus. You can, for example, then later found outposts on Mercury as well. And this is the way to go. You do that research and then you can send prospectors there. And you want to be quick about it. That's why you n need boost for, because especially on Moon and on Mars, the good bases get gobbled up really, really quickly. There's a lot of asteroids out there, so once it gets there, you can choose relatively freely. Though you want to check out when you can send them there, because the launch window is pretty important for that part as well. Um, so that's why you don't need ships too early. Don't go for spaceships too early. You don't need them to get there. And you can get the prospectors there as well. And what you need to worry about ships is, um, and the most important, like, weapon systems and so on, you get all the time. And But the one really important stat is the Cruise Delta V. Cruise Delta V is the most important stats. And the tooltip here is really misleading, because it says, like, ships with less than 5 kPa Delta V may have trouble reaching the moon from Earth orbit, and with less than 10 kps, Delta V will not be able to reliably perform interplanetary transfers from Earth. So that lets you think, okay, if I have more than 10 Delta V, let's go to Mars with that. But to be honest, everything below 50 kps is just so, so slow in orbit. Like the only really re reasons you want to build that is if you really want the ship before everyone else and you kind of want to do something wild with it, like destroy the ISS or something like that, then you might want to build a ship with below 50 kps. And it even below 90 F, uh, kps, they still struggle to get everywhere and anywhere in the Earth orbit in a quick manner. Like they will take a couple of months to get to their objective. And only once you get into the the above 100, 120 kps section, you really get fast space travel. Now, with 161 things within Earth orbit, you get there within a couple of days or weeks, or maybe even hours. So, you really want to get above the 100 kps threshold, and, like, at minimum, I would say, is 50, before you do things in a bigger margin in space. Before that, maybe one or two spaceships just to be the first to launch a spaceship because that gives bonies. And you could maybe do uh, something, as I said, like destroying the ISS with your first spaceship. But other than that, it's really not worthwhile to invest into low KPS ships. Like the 5, five and 10 makes you think like everything above that might be solid. It's absolutely not. You want to have much higher KPS on your ships. Um, yeah. And then the last important thing is one thing that is really, really important and that, you sh that is an information that you should have an eye on is this one. Under the aliens, under Intel and then under the alien threat, the estimated alien threat level. Keep an eye on that because if that goes too high, the aliens are coming for you. And you should keep an eye on it because if the aliens are coming for you and you're not ready for it, it might end disastrous for you. Um, yeah, that is the last one. Keep an eye on it. You, if you're ready for them, let them come for you. But make sure that you're uh, somewhat ready before you go into too much of a direct confrontation with the aliens, if that is your path. So, yeah, that's the last tip, tip number 10. I hope these were helpful. If you have any more and you think I missed any, let me know down below. L let's help everyone out in this community because this game is amazing but it's not easy to learn for sure and yeah i m most likely will m do more of these videos in the future because there's just so many things in this game that are really really well done and modeled but maybe not so well explained and i want to help you guys out not running into the same mistakes that i did so with that said thanks for watching the video if you liked it consider leaving a like if you want to see more 
Nib uh, Terran Victor, consider leaving the follow. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.